Let's get back to the markets here as we count you down to the close with about 45 minutes until we get to those closing bells. David Bonson joining us right now, the chief investment officer over at the Bonson Group. And uh, David, let's start off here with some of the, I guess, shorter term market moves that we're seeing, particularly on the day right now, where we're seeing a pretty remarkable sell off going on. Some of this seems to be tied to concerns about the earnings that we've gotten and them not necessarily being supportive of current valuations. Well, I think that's right. And I would point out that the Dow is only down about 20 basis points. And yet the Nasdaq is down, what, almost 250 basis points before the congressional press conference began. I mean, a a day in which one index is down more than 10 times what another index is, is really indicative of how much the market was weighted and dependent upon some of these big tech names. Google's quarter wasn't this bad. I mean, the cloud revenue growth definitely underperformed expectations. But the problem was really the valuation. It's that if you tighten things up where the the valuation is, is so perfect and you get even modest bad news, this is the kind of response you get. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, no one's going to say this is a bad business or that it's not doing well here. But right. when you have that run up like we saw over the uh, in the first start of the year here, uh, there's a lot that these companies have to show and prove. I am curious about the other side of this uh, trade, David, and that's to do with some of the second tier companies and even some of the small cap names, which have never really seemed to gain any ground this year. And is that also out of fear, not so much of valuations, but of the structure of their business? Well, do you do you mean the small cap index at large, or yeah. particularly those? Well, let's talk yeah, about well, that. I mean, at I, large, think, yeah. I think I think the Russell two thousand right now is close to a record level of non profitable companies in the index. You have a small cap space that is somewhere between forty and fifty percent money losing. It's it's unfathomable to me. I mean, you talk about one sector of investing that screams for active management, not passive. It really is small cap. And that's a big part of the problem is there's too many small cap publicly traded companies, especially on the tech side, that are unprofitable. And we're already coming with stretched valuations. And, David, that's a really interesting point that if you're an active manager, a manager, there's a lot of uh, opportunity there in the small cap space. But you talk about that stress that some of those smaller companies are facing. And maybe you're seeing that in the Russell 2000 and other small cap benchmarks. But then you take a look at the debt markets. You take a look at credit markets, in particular high yield spreads. You aren't necessarily seeing that same level of stress. When do we start to see it filter out more broadly? Well, we've been really focused on the fact that from 2003 to 2007, absolute yields were going higher and spreads really weren't until they did. And right now, absolute yields have obviously gone much higher. But to your point, spreads have not. It's remarkably contained. In fairness, defaults have also been quite low. I think a lot of companies in the high yield bond market had financing in place. They had sort of revved up their balance sheet during 2020, 21, low rate environment. They face a maturity wall. We talk about it a lot, both in the bond market and the floating rate bank loan market. There are more uh, refinancings that will come due in 24 and 25. So far, I think it's been a byproduct of companies not needing to tap credit markets that much. And where some companies have needed credit, the private credit world has been phenomenal. Even if it's been at a higher cost, they've been able to go quickly and efficiently with these new innovations in private credit. And David, when you put that all together and you think about refinancing risk, you think about uh, the fact that you have a lot of companies going to the private credit market willing to pay up, wrap that all together into how you're positioning in your portfolio. When you think about the different stress points under the surface of the benchmarks here, where are you finding opportunity? Well, so I'll say two things real quickly. One is that you can either conclude about this maturity wall and the future issues we face, that things will get really bad later, or you can conclude that the Fed knows it too and that the Fed will end up loosening monetary conditions before it gets to that point. That's my conclusion. I don't believe the Fed is really going to let a 10% default environment take hold. Uh, I certainly think there's going to be other collateral damage, but not to that core. But to answer your question, where we're positioning clients, I can't focus enough on dividend growth equities. Very selective because I don't believe you want to be buying big tech at 
50 times earnings. And I don't think you want to buy an S&P 500 that only has seven companies delivering all the return. Those cap-weighted index stories don't end well when it gets this top-heavy. History is very clear about that. So we're focusing on cash flow growth with strong balance sheets. And I think that there's going to be great opportunities going into 2024 in some of these names that have struggled this year in consumer staples, for example. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, energy is still doing very well. A lot of good dividend growers there. All right, David, got to leave it there. Hope to have you back soon. Our thanks to David Bonson of the Bonson Group.